We want to know if we should peel the seed coat of an avocado seed or leave it be. So myself and my subscribers conducted an experiment and we combined our results. And today we're going to talk about what we learned. G'day avocado enthusiasts and welcome to Scott Grows and Avocado Tree. And many an avocado enthusiast have asked the question, when starting an avocado seed with the water and toothpick method, well, should I peel the seed? There is a seed coat, the very outside of the seed, which can be removed fairly easily. But should we? I wanted to know if peeling a seed actually made a difference. There was a 1963 study that claimed that, yes, peeling the seed coat or removing the seed coat before germinating the seed increases the probability that your seed's going to germinate and it even increases the speed at which it germinates. So I wanted to, in the spirit of scientific inquiry, recreate that experiment. Now this was not an, oh, I don't believe that experiment. I'm gonna do science myself. No, not at all. Science is about combining knowledge. It's about being able to repeat an experiment and still get the same results. Or if we need to adjust our understanding, we need to adjust our understanding. Our understanding of the world is constantly changing as we discover more things. So a part of the scientific method is that things can be repeated. And so we wanted to repeat that experiment. So in September of 2020, I designed an experiment very similar to the one published in 1963, and we conducted it as an international community of avocado enthusiasts, which is why we called it the International Avocado Experiment. After inviting my subscribers to participate, many of them did, and they ran their own trials in their own homes. The hypothesis or prediction that we're investigating is that seeds that are peeled would have a higher and faster germination rate. We started our trials in October of 2020. Each trial involved two avocado seeds set up in the water and toothpick method under identical conditions, except for one is that we had a control group. That was the seed that we left peeled. We didn't adjust that. And then our experimental group, which we peeled. So we had unpeeled seeds and peeled seeds. And we wanted to compare the two. Other than that, they were kept under identical conditions. Then we waited and observed. We were waiting to find a root protruding at the bottom of the seeds. That was what we would call the germination date. Once we saw a root protruding at the bottom of a seed, the note was made of that date. That was our germination date. Then in December of 2020, we submitted our results. So whether or not the seeds had germinated and when we started them, when they germinated, if they did in fact germinate. That's all been and done now. And now we get to the exciting part of the experiment where we get to analyze the data that we collected. There were 27 trials run by people all over the world. I was hoping we'd get a few more, but I understand that it was a bit of a commitment and really, it's not a bad sample size. It enables us to see the trends and draw conclusions. I recorded the country from which each trial was run, but I don't have enough data to make a comparison, but it was interesting for me to see where you're all coming from. The first question that we answered was whether or not each individual seed germinated within the trial period. So within the two or three months, depending on when you started the experiment. Of the control or the, the unpeeled group, just over half, so 55.6% of the seeds germinated. And interestingly, when we look at the experimental group or the peeled group, that jumps up to 70.4%. So the peeled group had almost 15% higher success rate when it comes to germination within the trial period. So according to our results here, the peeled seeds had a higher success rate. But we didn't just want to know the success rate, so whether or not they germinated. We wanted to know about the speed at which they germinated as well, which is why we recorded the date, so the starting date and the end date. Now, to find out, I did some number crunching. So for every single seed which germinated, so both the peeled and unpeeled ones, I looked at the start date 
the end date, the germination date, and I calculated the number of days which had elapsed. To be able to compare the two groups, I needed to find some averages. So I calculated the mean for each group. So essentially, once I had calculated each individual seed, how long it took to germinate, I added those totals together within each group. So all of the peeled seeds together and all of the unpeeled seeds together. Then I divided it by the number of seeds that were in that group that successfully germinated. And that gave me the average or the mean for each group, which I'm able to compare. Our experiment showed that the average or mean time for our control or unpeeled group to germinate was 44.5 days. Our peeled group or our experimental group took just 37.3 days on average to germinate, which means that on average, the peeled seeds germinated 7.2 days faster than the unpeeled seeds. So the peeled seeds germinated on average one week faster than the unpeeled ones. Interesting. Now I should point out that some participants had very different results than what we're seeing here when we average it all out. The fastest germinating seed was actually an unpeeled one in only 12 days. Interestingly also, our slowest germinating seed was a peeled one, which took 78 days to germinate. But where does that leave us? Well, that's why we run many tests. That's why we have a large sample size, because outliers do happen. We need to expect that. And so those numbers, they're, they're all still in those averages. What we saw really was that most of the peeled seeds germinated faster than most of the unpeeled seeds. There is a link in the description below to my data, which you can have a look through yourself. So our experiment concluded that peeled seeds have a higher germination success rate and a faster rate of germination than their unpeeled counterparts when we're germinating them with the water and toothing method. This supports Cardman's 1963's conclusions, or the, the journal which we looked at when we were starting this experiment. We found the same thing that they did. Now, reflecting what I'd like to learn in the future or what I'd like to do differently next time, as scientists do when they finish their experiments, I would love to try this with a much larger sample size. We had 27 trials, which is great. We could draw some conclusions from that. I'd love to know if we see these same trends or the same conclusion with a much larger number, a hundred, a thousand, maybe. I'd love to do that at some point. I'd also like to know if we see a similar trend if we use different methods of germination. So we use the water and toothpick method for this experiment. But what if we germinate it in soil? sphagnum moss or other methods of germination. We'll see how we go. We might get to that in the future here on this channel. And that's where we're going to leave our international avocado experiment. We found that peeling the seed increases its likelihood of germinating and also increases the speed at which it germinates. If you participated in this experiment, thank you very, very much. I literally couldn't have done this without you. And we needed a good sized sample in order to get accurate results. If only a few people joined me, we wouldn't have had a very good experiment. But because you participated, we were able to get some reasonable outcomes. Your participation has contributed to our understanding of avocados. Thank you as well very much to those people who contributed footage from their own experiments that you've been seeing throughout this video. I really appreciated it and I really have enjoyed watching your portion of the experiment. I hope that you all who participated enjoyed, as much as I did, watching and also sharing our results. I have a write-up of this experiment for your reading pleasure available on my website scottgrowsandavocadotree.com. There's a link directly to that post in the description below. If you'd like to have a look through some of the data that we found, there's no personal data. Don't worry participants, I haven't included your countries or any other per identifiable in information. Just the dates, just the success rates, those kinds of things. I've really enjoyed participating in the scientific method with all of you. And even if you didn't participate, I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video. And thank you for watching this video. And thank you 
for all of you who have participated in this experiment. It's been a joy and we might have to do some more in the future. We'll see how we go. If you enjoyed watching today and you're not a regular viewer of Scott Grows and Avocado Tree, please do consider subscribing for more avocado content. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you next time. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree.